Dan's here. Hello, Dan. How are you doing? Hello. I'm good. So fun story. I got new headphones because I lost my old one. Right. But then I went to hook them up. And did you know? Mm -hmm. We all know that iPhone like got rid of the headphone jack because money. Did you get now lightning head headphones? Now they make headphones that only plug in to the headphone jack and not. <laughs> Tara, the mic did you get lightning? And I didn't know that. <laughs> and, they and they don't make the reverse dongle. <laughs> so Dan's just not allowed to type while we're on the air. <laughs> That's my role. Until I buy a whole new set of headphones again, because I am very stupid. So we've, uh, so. The, we, we, the kitten is, has been here for a week. She's, she's getting kind of. She's so cute. Yeah, she's a little rambunctious and a wee bit aggressive. Um, Sarah has decided to call her. Fighter? It's starting to be. I've, I, we're having to point where <laughs> if she starts doing that, we, I, I immediately leave the room because we're not, no, you can't do that. Yeah. But uh, we were, Sarah's decided to call her Lumi. That's her name now. And Grady has been, I, I don't know how he feels about this. Because he's hes alternately scared of her. I don't know where the other ones are, so you have to deal with these. Okay. He's, he's alternately, alternatively scared of her, and at the same time very interested in her. Because today, apparently, she was sitting, he was sitting outside her room crying. Aww. And Sarah was like, what are you doing? It's like, ah. I would like to see the baby. Even though the baby, every time the baby sees him, she hisses and, and growls at him. Yeah. <coughs> She's a good deal more aggressive than he is. He, he's, he's like, <coughs> he's, he's, not, a calico, man. he's not prepared for this. Tricolor girls are spicy. He doesn't, he doesn't, it, it, it could be any cat. He doesn't know what the f*** to do. Well, and it seems he's very jealous because he's gotten very clingy. <coughs> he's like, daddy. I don't know why. why I, spend most, love me anymore? I spend most of my time with him. Why did you need a new kitty? I'm a good kitty. We got the nine kitten for him, mainly. Okay, Now that little update's out of the way. Let's, let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine's Radio Dead Air audience on the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff right back here. A segment we like to call Fuck Now, what it, this is kind of an unfocused week. We're, we're at that period of the year where people aren't quite sure how stupid they're going to be. Oh, so good. It's a little all over the place. We're doing the sampler. Yeah. But that being said, that's that's not to don't there, there's going to be some twists and turns here, folks. It's it's you're in for a ride as always. And let's uh, let's start. Where is this one from? This is uh, Florida. Of, of, of course, this is fucking. Florida. How could this be anywhere else but Florida? Um, You ever been fishing? No. Really? Never? Not 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 with your dad or nothing? You never went to like a pond at a park or anything? No. Um, You've been fishing. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd believe me if I told you anything was, was a viable fishing, right? Sure. Like, you know, you, you fish with, with a pole and uh, with, with hooks and, and spinners and, uh, and hypodermic tiny, needles. Tiny fish and worms. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, you need uh, you need hypodermic needles. Um, <laughs> Just a drug suspect claim bag of syringes was for fishing. A drug, drug suspect found with fentanyl and a bag of hypodermic needles uh, told Florida police that he used the syringes, quote, for fishing. Police responded Saturday afternoon to a 911 call about a suspicious person encountered Eric Bennett 30 on a Vero Beach street. Officer described Barrett, as seen above, as visibly intoxicated on an unknown substance. <coughs> Asked about large bulges in the pockets of his shorts and whether he possessed any weapons, Bennett replied, quote, I have hypodermic needles 
or <coughs> fishing. Now, okay. I understand spear fishing. You know, you, you line it up and you throw it and and I under, even understand dynamite <coughs> fishing because that's you throw dynamite and boom and it stuns the fish and it's terrible. Are you actually going what are you like Dexter <coughs> except with fish? Are you like creeping up on the fish and putting ketamine in their fucking neck? What the fuck? The thing is, though, to inject the fish with the fentanyl, uh -huh. you have to have already caught it. No, 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 no. You creep up on them when they're they're going about their day, when they're shopping or at the, at the mall. <laughs> you, you follow the fish around. You, you get an idea of the fish's movement patterns. And then when they're not suspecting it and no one else is around, you get behind the fish. Maybe when they're in like a parking garage. Right, and you have to make sure that no one can hear the fish scream. And then mm. you just... You get them and you bring them back, and you got your you've got your kill room all set up. You've got the the uh, the plastic all over everything, so none of the none of the blood gets anywhere. And uh, then you can confront the fish with their crimes and let them know what they did and why they're why they're on your table. Okay. <laughs> Is that Dexter? That's that's. <laughs> I never watched that show. That's okay. It ended terribly. So yes, that is yeah, that's <laughs> But like of all the excuses. Of all the it's I fish with these. Do you though? <laughs> Please explain your method to me. Cause I've never been fishing, but my nephew loves fishing. My nephew who I used to live with and when I lived there, I had a queen size bed in my room and he literally laid out all his fishing lures to show them to me. And they covered the entire queen size bed. And he explained each one to me and what fish they were for. And I retained none of that information. None of them was a syringe. The, I have, there is some wacky shit when it comes to fishing lures, especially like 19th century fishing lures with, with, endangered species feathers and it is crazy there's a black market for fishing lures i shit you not it's fucking wild like a dude robbed the british museum of history of they, they keep some of the feathers and bird corpses for like scientific research they're not allowed to do them anymore so they keep them preserved dude robbed them of the feathers fucking crazy and yet they don't use fentanyl Does that attract more fish if you use the endangered feathers? No. It doesn't. It's just this weird fucking fetish thing. That's not really a fetish, but I guess you Because my nephew way. also used to make his own little lures out of fucking wine corks. Yeah, no. They, 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 the whole <coughs> making fishing lures, with it's fucking crazy. It's wild. And I yeah, mean, I guess... Your hobby involves getting up at 4 a.m. and just sitting outside in the cold doing fuck all. You're going to go a little crazy. And that's when you need drugs. <clears throat> Especially if you're sitting in a little in a little shed on a frozen lake. Well, OK, no one actually goes out to the shed in the frozen lake to fish. They go out there to drink and hide from the entire rest of the world. And that's the only reason to be there. Do that somewhere with heat. Well, they have little heaters. They go out there. Yeah, Valkyrie. She's like, that's stupid. Uh, so our next you one. You should just fish in a can like civilized people. <coughs> Speaking of stupid, this next one is. Uh, there's that old saying about going back to the scene of the crime. That's how you get caught. But normally when you go back to the scene of the crime, it's not to do the same crime again. Oh. And again. No. Because no. just throwing this out there, it might make you, I don't know, a little easier to catch. Man who robbed Jersey City grocery store three times in six days. Wow. Is nabbed by waiting police officer. 
man who assaulted owners and robbed a Jersey City grocery store three times in six days was captured by a waiting police officer when he came back a fourth time. Store surveillance taken Friday night at Augie's Grocery Deli shows the violent perp jumping across the counter just as he had three previous previous three times between January 10th and 16th. Only this time, instead of getting away with cash or merchandise, the robber was stunned when off-duty police officer Maurice Johnson, who had stopped by to check on the store, jumped out of the back of the store. Surprise, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> the robber took off for the exit, but he was caught and arrested around the corner uh, by Johnson and the store owner's son, August Lopez Jr., who is a Jersey City police officer. So not only were you robbing the same store over and over? Their kid is a cop. That's real dumb. You know, there are other stores, right? Yeah. Like, or there, there's you lots could of just them. Not steal. If the, you're, you're, in, you're in Jersey. You have, like, okay. There's a convenience store like every 10 feet. When I was young, my parents uh, would take me and my grandparents, uh, and that's where my mom grew up, and it's a little tiny place called Guyton, Georgia. <clears throat> and back when we first started going there in like the 80s when I was really small, there was one store, one, one convenience store, one place to get gas. That was it. The place called Max. It was owned by a guy called Mac. The floor was concrete. They had fresh produce. Okay. Wow. Now, in that circumstance, I can understand robbing that place right. because where are you going to go? But you're in Jersey. You're in Jersey City. Throw a stick. Like, you're going to hit a bodega. Exactly. Or a 7-Eleven. Or a fucking Wawa. <coughs> fucking stop and shop. Where it's so, like... If you have to steal food, because I know people are going to be like, right. maybe you can't afford food. Steal from a fucking corporation. Right, yes. Walmart. It's easy steal to steal from Steal from the from goddamn Walmart. stop and shop. Don't steal from 77-year-old Augie. Do, do you know how you steal from Walmart? Here's how you steal from Walmart. I'm going to get in trouble for this. This is how you steal from any corporate place. You go in, you grab the thing, you walk out. They can't stop you. No, co they'll call the cops on you, but they can't stop you. They're they're, they're not most large companies now. The the boots on the ground employees. The loss prevention is one: annoy them with great customer service. Yep, and hope that you make them feel weird. And if that doesn't work, let them go. Right. Because corporate doesn't want to risk a lawsuit from a potential customer. We are literally in a country where you can rob a place without a gun. Yeah. What a country. And also the employees aren't paid enough to give a fuck. Exactly. But every job they were like, you know, use a recovery statement. And just try to annoy the shit out of them. And if that doesn't work, you know, just tell a manager and let it let it go. Tanner in the channel. If you plan on shoplifting, please let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Six but just times. don't from the small businesses. Yeah, four times. And uh, the, the the dude's son is a cop. You're you're fucked. You're straight yeah. up fucked. You robbed the dude's dad with a gun. Oh, and by the way, they he broke his ankle. He broke the cop's ankle. Trying to get away. So you're double fucked. You, 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 that, that's, they can slap you with you know, assaulting an officer for that shit. Yeah. You're super fucked. Why and then every time an officer runs your plate for the rest of your life, Arrested. oh, assaulting a police officer. Yeah. Your, your taillight's I mean, pointing five degrees to the left of where it should be. Look at that little, that, that, who would rob them? I know. That's not even it. That's like that is your neighborhood store. Those are people that these are the people in your neighborhood. Put the gun away. Like unless this was something personal, I don't understand it. 
Mm, let's move on. Move along, do some utter audacity. Oh, good God. It's from Kentucky. The fucking audacity of this asshole. Have you ever seen? And maybe you have. You're from Long Island. Um, have you ever seen a limo with a stripper pole on the trunk? Ooh. No, really? Wow. Okay. So even to you, this is kind of what the shit. How are you supposed to dance on that? Um, well, presumably they park the car. Oh, okay. Presumably. Otherwise, you better like hang on real tight. You better be good at clutching the pole with your legs. Yeah. Um, well, the so already you're kind of in you're in a tacky place already. You're driving around with that. But to get make it worse, oh Jesus, this guy. A limo with a trunk mounted stripper bowl crashed into a creek. The Kentucky owner has started a GoFundMe campaign to cover the <laughs> impound fees. Honey, no. Mm -mm. Wow, that really does have a stripper pole in the fucking trunk. <laughs> Drivers in Bourbon County, Kentucky, were in for a strange sign on the first day of the new year. A limo with a stripper pole mounted on the trunk was spotted beached on a slope in a small creek and completely abandoned. Now, after, hours after the limo left the road, the incident was reported to the Bourbon County Sheriff's Department. The police impounded the strange vi vehicle, and the owner opened a GoFundMe page to regain possession of the limo. On the page, owner Troy James states, Want to apologize for my car being placed somewhere it never should have been. This is an apology that completely omits any information that should have that could have hinted at how the limousine ended up in this predicament. So far, only a hundred dollars has been contributed toward the fifty-five hundred dollar goal. Um, the vehicle used by most limousine services, uh, equipped with vertical poles, are elongated SUVs. The pole mounted internally. The vehicle's owner claimed the pole is meant for flags. That's highly unlikely. The pole's height and dia diameter, as well as the visibly reinforced trunk lid and mounted lights, scream pole for strippers. Like, I, I want to fly the flag. I put the flag the, on, on the, the, the limo. Is the flag's name Candy? <laughs> Listen, if you want to recover this vehicle, you need to have a show on the cock. I know it's in the impound lot, so you're going to have to work out some logistics. But who doesn't want to say they went to that show? Oh, yeah, I went to the stripper pole show on the limousine. In the wild. impound lot. Just look at the fucking pictures there, man. I, that, that, that can't be sturdy enough to be safe for pole dancing. What? The... Because have you seen, like, pole dancers do some physics-defying shit. Like, they well, yeah. are incredibly talented women. The, the they do shit that scares the crap out of me. The trunk and has I been reinforced. They reinforced it. They reinforced the trunk. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I buy that that would be safe to bear weight. But it's on a it's on a limo. I don't think the whole and look at where the limo is. Fuck me. How did you do that? How did that how did you wind up there? That is a you took a trip, sir. What was your limo even doing there? You get a lot of calls for limos with stripper poles out in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. And like they mentioned in the article, a lot of uh limos are custom deals where they actually it's weird, they actually take cars apart, cut them in half, and weld them together to make longer cars so this my, car is my aunt's, my aunt's neighbor when i was a kid had a car it wasn't a limo hmm. it was just a car like that that they had welded two cars together and it had six wheels just because why not i want a car with six wheels i don't know how it turned but he was very proud of it like the transaxle on this fucker is fucked. That thing's probably the length of a football field. It's fucked. 
Ugh. All right. Well, next I up, think I think the universe just decided that you don't need a stripper limo. Who does? Well, next up we have a it's it's a Ryanair story because of course it is. Um we have we tend to hate the phrase the customer is always right because it's a stupid phrase. And they aren't. In fact, quite often the customer is very wrong. In this case, however, no, they're right. In fact, they were able to Google it and show you they're right. You fucking moron. And I want to I want to point out this is a person who works for an airline that travels to various countries. Ryanair apologize after Scotland isn't a country row with passengers. Oh no. Oh. Um, earlier this month, uh, Borders man, Piotr Diedrich, I think I said that right, and his family were preparing to return to Edinburgh from Lisbon. Uh, the family, who have Polish pa passports, have residency status in Scotland, and have lived in the country since 2005. The issue began on January 10th, when uh, their 13-year-old daughter, Amelia, was forced to take a um, pandemic test at the airport to get on the flight, which contravened the rules at the time. Family were told as they were Polish, the UK rules would have meant a COVID test was not needed, did not apply. Family were held back again after staff interrogated Mr. Zadrich's daughter, 23-year-old Carolina, asked her who the queen of the UK was and told her Scotland was not a country. Here's Morgan was working for an airline that really, it's really gone downhill from him, huh? Um... Amelia was, in fact, born in Scotland. You have to follow Scottish guidelines. Um, which other country rules can we possibly follow when entering our home in Scotland? After receiving this information, the staff member came back with printed rules for <coughs> England, which are, of course, different to Scotland, and tried to argue that Scotland is not a country and we should follow English rules. My dude, they had a war about that. Quite famously, Mel Gibson like made a terrible movie about it. Shit. What? Of all the colonizer shit. Scotland is not a... Co oh. Oh. That... Like, have you, sir, ever met a Scottish person? Because you wouldn't like them when they're angry. The minutes this dude, this Ryanair dude said Scotland was not a country, every Scottish person in the world, for some reason, it was like a spider sense, a tingling yeah. in the back of their net. What? Someone talking shit? What? They were all suddenly angry. What? It's the Scottish and the Irish. The fucking Irish just ran off Putin with a bunch of fishermen. <laughs> I saw that. That was fucking hilarious. They were like, listen, this could be dangerous for you. And they're like, fucking shoot. Country without a standing art Navy. <laughs> the, Sent them back in. In, in case you weren't aware, um, Putin and Russia were having uh, naval maneuvers and war games off the coast of Ireland. They're trying to intimidate the EU over this whole shit with right. Ukraine and, and NATO and all this. And um, the Irish fishermen drove off the Russian Navy. Irish fucking, <laughs> fucking love the neutral that. country and has been forever. Yeah, I don't think they if they have a standing navy, it's not a major one. <laughs> but the fishermen were like, "You start throwing off bombs, you're going to kill all the fish, and that's literally our living." So fuck yourself. And they just sailed out and went to work. And the Russian ambassador was like, "This could be dangerous for you." And they were like, "Fuck you. Go ahead and fire." on a bunch of civilians from a neutral country and see how that works out for you. Fuck around and find out. And they left. Um, Ryanair told the pa paper, Ryanair does not tolerate any form of racial prejudice. All of our customers are treated equally. Except they weren't. Um, like how the fuck do you work for an airline and not know this? How many times a day have you seen a Scottish fucking passport? You're at Ryanair! It's right next passport. door. What? Well, no. So, Would it be an EU passport at this point? I guess not. 
Yeah, it's not that Scotland is part it of the UK. It would be a UK passport because yeah. of Brexit. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to break loose and do it. But yeah, Scottish Scotland is in fact a country. And it's not like a country nobody's ever heard of. Like, uh, there are little tiny countries that your average civilian is not familiar with. Like, if you tried to tell me Lilliput's not a country, um, yeah, that's not a country. That, that's from Gulliver's goddamn travels. I'd be like, no, you're not from Lilliput. Where are you going? There's no fucking place. Scotland, Scotland is like, what's a Scotland? You made that up. What? There's a country where they take a fucking sheep's bladder and turn it to a musical instrument? You made that up. There's only the ones we don't turn into a delicacy. There's a country where they fill a sheep's stomach with, with meat and barley and, and cook it and eat it. You made that up. Like, it's a good thing they have not released this employee's name because they would be they would have problems. Especially considering Ryanair's Irish. Yeah. 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 Bit of, bit, of a, bit of a sensitive issue with the Scots and the Irish. Let's hop back across the pond to Connecticut. It's that time of year again. Uh-oh. This happens at two times a year. Either it's in the summer and someone's chasing around spiders, or it's in the winter and someone's trying to clear off ice. Homeowner tries melting snow with garden torch sets house on fire now i had to actually look this up if you don't know what a garden torch is um originally they said this was a flamethrower that was before they did a uh a correction um well i can understand the confusion this come on get over to the screen there you go this is a fucking garden torch it's a tank of propane connected to a wand that blasts fire. I'd call that a flamethrower. Maybe not Why technically a flamethrower. Why would you need that for gardening? Um, Kill stuff, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how that works. I'm not a gardener. I'm not a farmer. Seymour Fire Department put out a fire on Walnut Street on Saturday night. That was caused by a homeowner attempting to melt snow with a garden torch. Um, the homeowner attempted to melt snow from this weekend's nor'easter with a garden torch and accidentally set the siding on fire. Flames were also found in an exterior wall. The fire was swiftly knocked down before they were able to enter the house again. How? How could? Okay. We're in a place where we don't even typically get ice a whole lot. When we do, it's kind of news. Even then, I wouldn't go, well, the solution to this is fire. And I'm the guy yeah. who tries to solve things with fire. Connecticut, ice is not an anomaly. No, you should be used to this by now. Nor'easters are not uncommon. If you don't have a bag of rock salt by October, exactly. you have failed. Exactly. At home. I lived in Illinois and we I got fro we got snowed literally fucking snowed in. It was so bad I could not open the door to my truck. It was frozen shut. Okay? I understand salt. It takes a while. You just got to wait for it. But it works. Ah, I can do that. I got fire here. Just the steam fire maybe pointed away from your home. Yeah, because look, look at that. Just look. Maybe oh, man. Flamethrower away from your home. Ooh, that went through the siding, through the insulation. There's there's the, the, the studs on the inside. Oh, man. You fucking idiot. The fuck were you? What the, what the fuck were you fucking? Yeah, it's not. That's not how you solve that problem. No, it's. it's why and do a I Connecticutian should know better. Why do I have to wait for fucking salt? I have fire. I, 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 I discovered fire. I should be able to use it. That's not just, just don't point it at the vinyl siding. At the very, very least. I know, right? Even the aluminum siding. Don't. If you get shit gets hot enough, yeah. you can set aluminum on fire. 
that even if you don't, you'll set the ship behind the aluminum on fire. I, I, every year, some, I, yeah, I don't know how we haven't learned this lesson. Every year, someone, just, we're still doing this. It's every, it's like, it's like that stupid ass scene from Arrested Development. It's like everybody tries, does it ever work? No, it, it always fails every single time. But I think for us, just maybe it might work. No, you're not special. You're not that. It's not going to work. <coughs> Finally, tonight, a long while back, we started lamenting, and I say that lightly, that uh, where would people going to go to fight now that Chuck E. Cheese is shutting down? Uh oh. And, and we were we were wondering because as as you may not be aware of if you're not in America, um, traditionally, this this is an American, uh, tra it's tradition, um, that when Americans wish to settle their disputes, they gather their children, they go to Chuck E. Cheese, they uh they set them loose in the arcade and then beat the snot out of one another, and that's just that's how we do things. That's how we settle disputes. It's it's tales yeah. old as time. Um, probably combat. Um, At, with animatronic mice. But then, then it came out that uh, Chuck E. Cheese was going bankrupt. They're shutting down. It's like, oh, no. where were people? Where are people going to solve their problems? Well, don't worry. We've got the new place. Welcome to the Royal Rumble. At the fucking Golden Corral. Oh. Police are actively investigating a brawl. Uh, at a popular uh, Benselum buffet restaurant sat Friday afternoon after the fight was captured on video that has gone viral on social media. Look at this shit. They tore that place up. Director of Public Safety William McVeigh confirmed the department is actively investigating what happened Friday around 4.30 p.m. McVeigh did not have an exact count of how many people were involved, but officers believe it was more than 40. The fight left the dining room heavily damaged, said people fleeing for safety. Police are not aware of any serious injuries. No arrests have been made as of Monday. Business reopened on Sunday. At this point, police believe an argument between customers started the fight. You think? Video posted on Facebook shows a large crowd of customers shouting and screaming before patrons started running as others began throwing chairs, high chairs, and tables. Some customers were seen attacking people using tables and chairs. The woman who posted the video on Facebook has since removed it. The restaurant could be seen intervening and separating the customers as items were flying around them. Jim. We're going into year three yeah. of the global pancetta, right? Yeah. yeah. Who the fuck is going to a buffet? Not, I never want to eat at a buffet again. No, I, I, well, I've never been really comfortable with the whole. I mean, even, even the the China buffet, which I used to do for, we used to do that on Thanksgiving and Christmas sometimes. Still, oh, we're throwing crinkly balls. Yeah. But like, do you ever want to eat buffet style again? So how are there enough people at the fucking Golden Corral the where I wasn't people. even aware you were allowed to be under the age of 60? <laughs> right? To have a fight. You must be this old to eat the Golden Corral. <laughs> You've got a little chart. Check how many wrinkles you got. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, sir. You don't qualify for Social Security yet. Sorry. You have to come back. Come back in five years. I was at an IHOP when a brawl like this broke out once. Dottie. <laughs> it, we, we were there, there for afters, after a game. Yeah, you mentioned and, this, yeah. Yeah, the same IHOP was the one everyone went to after the bars and clubs closed. And a giant-ass brawl broke out, and someone got thrown on our table. It wasn't awesome. How do you leave that place? What happened? Oh, man. We threw down at the Golden Corral. It was fucking awesome. No, no. With who? With whose grandma? Like, it's just, it's, what, how, in that moment, do you, I would, if I were there, it would just all rush to me where I was in my life and what was happening to me. 
Like everything suddenly goes slow mo as you raise up a chair to hit someone at the Golden Corral. All of a sudden, all your bad decisions just rush to you, and you realize how you came to that point in your life. It's like the freeze frame in an 80s movie. You might be wondering how I got into this situation. They were throwing high chairs. Jesus. I hope to God they took the babies out of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd like to think. Jesus. What could, what could go so wrong at the fucking right? Golden Corral that it needs to be the Royal Rumble? <laughs> Don't, what, what, is, what, what is worth fighting over? It's a buffet! You all Did get the same get the shit! Of dried out, overcooked prime rib? They saved you. You know what it was. They saved your life. You know what it was. Some dude was doing this. These are all mine now. That's horrifying to think about. <laughs> That's what a buffet is. That's why it's a terrifying proposition. Don't eat at buffets. It's terrible for you. Yeah. I, I, I used to be okay with it, but ever since the Rona, uh -huh. we drive by buffets now, and I'm like, that is a business model of the past. Yup. Jesus. Ain't no sneeze guard high enough. If I, I would, that's, this is a moment I would rethink. If I was in a fight at the Golden Corral, I'd be like, I've got to reevaluate a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. How did I get here? I have made some mistake. I have made some mistakes. Where did this all go wrong? <laughs> How did this happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I guess what, I, what choices led me here? I guess the first thing, if you find yourself living in a shotgun shack. <laughs> I was just going to say, well. How did I get here? In a ro Royal Rumble cage match, ladder match in the fucking Golden Corral. It's not even televised. What's even the fucking point? You know what? If they were actually shooting a video, I can understand. It's not even fucking true. You, you should really, this is, this is, this is a moment to reevaluate your fucking life. This is a turning point for you and you can turn up or down there's not very far down left to go we've learned that while yes fire is the natural enemy of ice it's also the natural enemy of buildings yes fire is a natural enemy of a lot of things you'll come to find yeah. it's yeah. it's it's not it doesn't play well with others um we we've learned that uh Maybe if you're in air travel, learn what is and is not a country. Yeah. Especially one where people who will kick your ass if you say they're not a country. They're a little sensitive about that, historically speaking. Um, we've learned that if your limo with the trunk-mounted stripper pole ends up in impound... Well, you better pay to get that shit out yourself. Don't th fuck your GoFundMe. That's a point where you might want to stop and reevaluate your choices. Right. That might also be a turning point it's, for you. It's a flagpole. Sir, why are there, there imprints from high heels on the trunk? It's a flagpole! We've learned if you were robbing the same place over and over again, kind of asking to get caught i don't know what yeah. did you have like was this a cry for help was that what this was because it didn't work no and finally we've learned and i don't know why we had to learn this you can't fish with hypodermic needles they won't bite them Fish, fish aren't into heroin. Strangely See, enough. On Long Island, you could fish for hypodermic needles. It's true, yes. In, in the days of my youth. You, I mean, you can even offer a fish a free hit. They're still, they're all, fish always, fish will say no. Yeah. Fish say no to drugs. 
Because they're fish.